What up, what up, what up, what up, people? It's your boy Marv Lat, and this is the Nerds in the Hood. Folks, fresh off the review I did of The Penguin, and fresh off the review I did of Agatha All Along, we got a new installment that I am doing. I decided because both shows were that fire, because both shows were that good. Both shows were two of the best shows of 2024, and both shows didn't involve the people we were looking to actually want to see. I decided to do a face-up challenge between what was the better show, Agatha All Along or The Penguin. Now, you've seen me do a similar verses like this before with um, the Love Island series, which uh, I debated which Love Island had the better season, which it was the American version or the British version. And we're going to do that again, FYI, later this year because of the fact that the Australian version just started their season about a week or two ago. So we're definitely coming back to that. We're going to revisit that. But in the meantime, we're here. Just I just want to like kind of just talk about what I feel was like the best and the worst of those shows, maybe more the best than the worst. So don't look for me to be doing a lot of uh, the worst. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, man, this is the worst drink they've ever done. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. Uh, But what I am going to say is, as I adjust my mic over to me, I am going to say that these two shows definitely showed out. No pun intended. These Like, when I was thinking about the best shows of the year, and the year's not even over yet, these two shows weren't even on my radar for best new best shows of the year, best new shows of the year, whatever you want to call it. They weren't even on my radar. So for that, these several weeks to be some of the dopest weeks to watch on a Sunday and a Wednesday, oh, man. Bravo. Bravo on both ends um, in this war between the MCU and the DCU. Uh, Anyway. Before I continue, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe with Nerds in the Hood. Check us out. Check out what we're doing on other social media sites. Check out what we're doing here on YouTube. Check us out, man. We got a lot of stuff going on. And also, big shout out to the good folks at Iconic Deals. Make sure you follow them online as well. I'll put the link in the description. That's where I got this nice shirt. Just another sexy ass bald guy. I saw it. I was like, I need that in my life. I ain't trying to flaunt. I ain't trying to do no shameless plugs. I just thought it was a cool shirt. Got to keep that confidence up, people. Got to keep that confidence up. So anyway, um, both shows actually started off very similar, which is what's crazy. So both shows are just two villains down on their luck after getting folded by the heroes of the series. And they come into some sticky situations that they had to get out of. And they were getting robbed by a teenage kid. They caught the kid. They pressed the kid. The kid ended up kind of being like, hey, I, I'm just going to rock with you. And the villain was like, all right, and we rocking it with me, man. Let's go. Let's do this. And then they were going back on a, a vengeful quest for power. And they ran into crazy females along the way that were trying to take them out. So they had a lot of similar, similar things. There was more similar things about it, but... That was just so similar. It's it's crazy. And they're two different realms of like storytelling that they were trying to do. Because one's magical and one's mafia based. You know what I mean? So it's like that's the craziest thing. But it's just their trajectories are so like moving in such a similar fashion. It's insane. When the Batman movie came out, nobody thought that Colin Farrell would do such a good job as the Penguin. And he did such a good job as the Penguin. He earned himself this TV show. When WandaVision came out, nobody thought that Katherine Hahn would do this good of a job as Agatha. She did so good of a job as Agatha that she earned herself this TV show. Like, and it got two hit singles off of it with Agatha all along and down the witch's road. It's going, it's going bonkers right now. You know what I mean? So... I thought of some categories to kind of just throw in there. So that way I'm not like going all over the place and confusing people. Um, But but yeah, 
we are definitely about to dive into this who did what better so here's some of the ones i have here i got uh better scene stealers who had the better scene stealers now this show agatha all along had us believing we were gonna have a better better scene stealer in uh aubrey plaza and she did a good job and patty lapone did a good job she says amada did a good job they did good jobs however nobody is nobody this year is topping what Kristen milioti did nobody DJ O'Connell was a close second, and they were in the same show, but nobody's topping what she did in the scene still. In. This is, I hope it propels her to whatever heights. I hope she ends up in the Batman too. But this was such a good performance by her playing so uh, Sophia Falcone, aka Sophia Gigante. Um, she really made you believe that this was her, even when they say cut. You know what I mean? Like, she was that convincing. She was that fearful. She looked like a woman who was on the edge and she was done with the bull. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give that nod to the penguin. Definitely going to give that nod to the penguin. All right. So who, who had the better young companion? Now, in Agatha All Along, there was the teenager. This boy, um, although he seemed very uh just like this timid fanboy he ended up becoming a very powerful companion along the way whereas victor who was also a timid person to the penguin um but at the end of the day he was loyal he came through he he only thought about portraying the penguin once and even then he realized like we got to keep this going. And he grew because of that and became something. Wow, these shows are so similar. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because that's the same thing that happened to the teenager I get all along. But um, he grew into something better. So this one, the better teenager, and I'm not going by powers. I, Based on what I saw in the end, I got to say, I got to say, Victor almost had it there. But I got to give that one to, to, come on now, Billy. Billy was the better teenager. He was able to keep up with a bunch of powerful witches and survive. And then when you found out what he could really do, come on. It was no question. It was no question. So that one goes to Agatha. But the better young, the better young companion backstory also goes to the teenager because you find out that he's another kid living in another kid's body. That's an eye opener right there. I didn't know that he was another kid living in another kid's body. So that one also, I'm going to say, goes to Agatha. Vic's backstory is not that much, but it is sad also because his family was unfortunately taken away from him. They passed away during the events of the Batman movie. So as tough as that is, it ain't comparing to a kid who passed away in a car accident and his body is still moving, but his soul is not there. It's a whole nother child. That is intense. That is a lot to take in. Like, like pause. That is a lot to sit there and go, oh my gosh. You tell me he's not even him? Wow. Um, better plot twist. Again, this one, Agatha's going for the turkey. Because to find out that this kid was, like I just said, this kid is not even a kid we thought he was. Originally, he was just one kid named Will. Now he's another kid named Bill. Whatever. But either way. He is Wanda Maximoff's son, and you find out that this kid is the Wiccan. He is very strong, powerful magic user, and he is knowing how to use his powers, and he was able to trick Agatha until she realized that the Witch's Road was real. That's when she realized, like, I'm getting got, and I think I know who's gotten me. So all of that was pretty cool, and then you also find out that a lot of stuff was also done by Patty Lapone's character, Lila, the whole time. Like she was doing stuff from past too. So it was a lot of plot twists in there. Whereas, don't get it twisted though. Penguin's plot twists were more in the sense of like you thought Sophia was the hangman, but she never was. And then when you find out who it was and what she had to do to get through to that, those were some plot twists too. And they were pretty deep and dark and twisted. But none as twisted as, again, a kid being in another kid's body. It's <laughs> like, that's a crazy plot twist. There's other plot twists too, like Rio being deaf and stuff like that. But 
nothing's topping that to me. I'm sorry. Nothing is topping that. So better plot twist. Agatha is holding it down right now. Um, which show ended itself better? Which show had a better ending? Hmm. I'm going to say The Penguin did. The Penguin's ending was crazier because it was a man who, in his in his own warped mind, felt like I won. His own warped mind, he felt like I won. I beat everybody. I'm the last man standing. I'm on top of the hill and nobody can stop me. And they had to remind him at the end that he can be stopped. Batman is here. He can be stopped. Batman was just on a little vacay somewhere or fighting crime, doing something else. He's coming for you. But that whole time, he even got his girl to dress up like his mom's to make it seem like his mom was there to see him win. His Sophia's in jail. Carmine, I mean, uh, Maroney, whatever. All the ops. All the ops are gone. All the main obstacles in his way are gone. Right? So, <sighs> I think that was a greater ending because it was a man who feels in his heart that this is a win when it's so far from a win. It's just another day free. But due to the fact that he ain't get no respect coming up, this was a win for him. And it's going to remain a win. Whereas Agus's situation was just a witch being freed from everything she did and giving herself that second chance in a sense because she was scared she just came to terms with it in her mind she thought everything she was doing was fine but she also had to come to terms with the fact that like i can't go to the afterlife and look my son in the face or i still think she was talking about mephisto that she was just scared that if she goes down to the afterlife mephisto was going to be waiting to just abuse her or whatever um so i'm going to give that one to the penguin penguin had the better ending uh, who had the stronger squad? Ooh. So you're going by Penguin Squad, which was Vic and a lot of goons. But at the end of the day, ugh, all them goons is gone. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Penguin didn't have a strong squad. If all, the, all of them were gone and some of them were by his hand. Whereas Agatha also took out people. So it is kind of a similar situation. But I'm gonna say Agatha had a stronger squad because it's a bunch of witches. If we got if we got to differentiate the two, it's a bunch of witches. Um, we'll go with a couple more. Who had the better show? Who had the better show? Now, this is also a tough question because Agatha all along is a great show. Although Penguin is a heavier show because it was like they mixed. The show Gotham, it was like somebody took the show Gotham, somebody took the show The Sopranos, somebody took Batman itself and put it in a pot, stirred it around and gave us this. They gave us this and it was good. It was eight really good episodes about a man who just wanted respect, but the way he was carrying himself, it was really hard to respect him. But he made himself get the respect he deserved one way or another. And it didn't matter who was in his way. He was going to find a way to get through them. Versus a show that kind of was like on the rocks. Because it had a lot of baggage to hold itself down on. Now both shows, mind you. Both shows are in the, the CUs. But the DCU is coming off of just... A lifetime of embarrassment, basically. Whereas the MCU has this embarrassment, but the difference with the MCU is that people were expecting greatness already, even though the past year or so hasn't been too great. So I think a lot of people took this show with a grain of salt because they felt like we were just taking like a flash in the pan of Agatha's being hot at the moment, and it turned into more than that. But the Penguin was definitely out of left field shot that worked it worked and i have to say the penguin was the better show they both were dark when they needed to be dark but the penguin just dealt with so much more it was an inner workings to see how deranged the batman villain really is 
You know, we always get that in just a Joker, but we don't get that in a show like The Penguin. You see it, you see glimpses of it. And even in Gotham, you saw glimpses of young Penguin like turning crazy, you know? But you don't see that all the time. We don't get a lot of separate villain storylines. And then when we do, they're not that serious. Think about it. Harley Quinn was a good cartoon show, but it wasn't a serious cartoon show. It was goofy. Kite Man, need I say more? Like, you didn't get that. You got that in the cartoons and they were meant to be goofy. But you didn't get that in live action shows. And to get that from somebody not named Joker is amazing. DC, learn from this and make shows similar in greatness to this don't get me wrong i love doom patrol i love doom patrol i think it was an amazing show but clearly it's doing something wrong because it's not even hitting what this is hitting you know what i mean so i'm gonna say penguin is a better show but finally this one i want to go with this is an interesting one i'm gonna say who Oh, actually, I have two. I'm so sorry. I have two more. So I got who what, who had the crazier backstory? Whose backstory was crazier? Now, you have Oswald Cobblepot, who grew up idolizing his mom. He was crazy about his mom. And he didn't like the fact that nobody respected his mom, but he didn't like the fact that nobody respected him and his uh, condition with his leg and his foot and the way that he had to walk all crazy and stuff. And his brothers played a trick on him by playing hide and go seek. And he locked him down in a sewer where they eventually passed away. And it's it's not his whole backstory, but it's part of his backstory. Then you find out his mom put a hit out on him. She tricked him and brought him out to a nightclub where a mobster was going to take him out as a child. Oswald was still a child. And his mom had to pull back because she realized, one, that is still her son. And two, maybe she could try and change him. But as she slowly talked to him and she knew that he is the reason her boys are gone, he turned around and was like, your mom missed him too. I ain't going to hold you. And she looked at him like, are you serious? You the reason you miss him. You are crazy. So it was a lot of those elements where you're like, this is how crazy the penguin is. He's quick to lie. He's quick to change his stories. Up. He's quick to leave a person at the first moment's notice. And it made to show you just why he's so demented right now versus a backstory about a woman who lived for years, literal years, and how she kept acquiring power by hustling other witches and stealing their power with her son. To the point where you found out that she couldn't even get her son back because Death was like, yo, you wasn't supposed to have this dude that long in the first place. I gave you extra time because I was lazy. So <sighs> both of those are tough backstories because it leads to why these people are who they are. And you find out that she just kept hustling people for power so she could stay alive for years to avoid seeing her son in the afterlife, to avoid possibly seeing Mephisto, and furthermore, to avoid death altogether. Oh, oh man. Uh, this one, I got to give it a tie. It's I, I want to say Penguin, but Agatha's backstory for this show. And that's what I mean. Not their overall backstory in the comics or the movies. Whose backstory in this show made the character a more troubled person gave you more insight into how deranged this character really is it should be penguin but there's something there for agatha that makes me say that lastly though who was the crazier villain who was the better of the villains both of these even though this is a show where we're rooting for the penguin and we're rooting for agatha at the end of the day they're still bad guys they're still the antagonists of every story she, wanda was fighting agatha and in, and also Penguin was fighting uh, Sophia. Well, Penguin was fighting Batman. Now he's fighting Sophia. I'm sorry. But in this case, the better villain for now, I'm going to say, was, was Penguin. Because Penguin turned on everybody. He was only out for himself. His mom was pro the only exception. He was only out for himself. He did everything for him to get the W. 
He didn't care about his squad like that. He didn't care about Sophia like that. He didn't care about nobody else like that. He even took out Victor after everything Victor did for him. After all the sacrifice Vic was given, he still was like, yo, you, you value me as family, bro? Now you weak, man. You got to go. I don't got time for that. And whacked him. How dark can you get? Leaving his mom because he promised he would take her upstairs to a penthouse. Leaving her there while she's in a vegetative state and telling her we did it. We won because he still believes she can move. Having a woman dress up as his mother just so he can get the satisfaction to say, yeah, ma, we did it. Trying to take out people. <laughs> trying to take out people in jail and making sure when they take you out, they announce that this is for us. <laughs> Yo, Penguin was on another level. He was on another level. Agatha also had darkness in her too because she bound one of her friends for hundreds of years to the point that they couldn't use magic anymore. And she also tricked a bunch of witches for many of years to give their power to her. That is almost kind of a standard comic book villain vibe. But penguins were so demented that you're like, I see why Batman is alive because of cats like you. So I'm going to say the better villain in this story was definitely the penguin. Definitely the penguin. So it looks it's a very nice tie here. Both shows are good. I'm kind of mad that I did that to myself and gave a tie. <laughs> um, I'm still going to say penguin was the better show. Penguin was the clear cut favorite to me. But I just wanted to give myself clarity into that. But Penguin was such a good show. And I said this in my review that if you didn't see it, please go catch it. I even said, yo, they might get snubbed out of the awards, but one of them, somebody from that show got to take home something because they were that good. And if you haven't seen it yet, if you haven't finished it, check it out. Same thing with Agatha all along. These are amazing shows. These are This is a comic book year. I keep telling y'all people, this is a superhero year. 2024 is truly a superhero year. And we've had so much over the year between Deadpool, The Boys, Invincible being back, My Hero ending. So much stuff to now where two companies who... One was on the right side of greatness, but started faltering a bit. And one wasn't knowing greatness for a while, unless it had the name Batman on it. Still resorted to Batman, but didn't use him so they could make a good show either way. Would, have, would Batman being in it have made a difference? Eh, probably. But he wasn't. They had to figure all this stuff out themselves. So it's still made for good television. And I have to give it props for that. Because of the fact that I also said earlier in the year, we need to give Batman a break. We need to stop doing stuff involving Batman. And even though this does involve Batman's universe, it didn't involve Batman at all. He didn't show up. He didn't stand there. He didn't drive his car. All they did was a bat signal and that's it. I could live with that. Now that this show is done, let's focus on less Batman stuff. But again, on a company that... Doesn't have a lot going for him, so they do rely on Batman and the universe of Batman. This is another step in their belt, another notch in the belt. It's another win for the DC universe. They need to do more like this. Agatha All Along doesn't need to be the only Marvel TV show to make DC push. What If has to push. Daredevil has to push. Wonder Man has to push. They all have to push so we can have more conversations like this. Mind you, folks, these are two good shows that are being critically acclaimed, and they didn't have anything to do with any Marvel or DC superheroes. It didn't have anything to do with it. We watched Agatha. There was no Wanda. There was no Captain America. There was no Iron Man. There was nothing. And we watched Penguin go hard without Batman even turning his car on to warm it up. That's good entertainment, people. This is what we came for. This is good television. And I'm hoping for more. I can't wait until all these comic book shows come out and we keep this comic book frenzy going. It can't just end at 2024. We need it to go further above and beyond. So that is my compare and contrast here. Um, if there's ones you want to compare or there's things you think I missed, write it in the comments. I'll write back 
and uh, let me know how you felt about it. Let me know what you thought was the better show, what was the better move, what was the better vibe. Let me know. But I'm going to say Penguin was the better of the two. I got to say it. It's what it is. Um, and I loved it. Loved everything about it. So anyway, make sure you follow us once again on all social media. If you go into the description, you will see the link tree. It will be there. It will say link tree, nerds in the hood and stuff like that. You can click on it. Follow us on all social media. Check out all the other content we have and then some. But in the meantime, in between time, it's your boy Marv Lat. I'm going to catch you next time on Nerds in the Hood. Peace.